It's an honor to be here in Chun International Baptist Church, and thank you, Pastor John. Uh, just give us this opportunity to preach the word of God. And thank you uh, for your uh, support and prayer as we serve the Lord in the land of China. My name is Samuel Kim Mishin to China. And uh, uh, as we came here, I think, in 2015, and Sammy and John, I just only had two you know, boys, and they are like five and three now. They are 10 and eight. And also God you know, gave us two more children, and, and Joey and Joshua, three years old, and then four months old. But I want to also thank you, uh, the Incheon International Baptist Church, for your uh, to prayer and, and so forth. And uh, do we have a um, prayer request? Uh, yeah. Please pray. Okay, she says to. Okay. She says to the recovery about cancer. Do you have any prayer request? Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, Lord, and I pray that you will be with our sister, Esther, Lord, and I pray that you would uh, uh, be with her, and I know she's getting through that hard time and through the cancer. I pray that you would uh, uh, give her joy and peace uh, through the word of God, Lord, and uh, you would touch her body, you would heal her. I pray that you would uh, be with uh, the here as I preach the word of God, Lord, and uh, you would fill me your spirit as I the preach, Lord, and I know I, I cannot do anything, Lord, and I and I cannot even the, the, the convince these people, Lord. I pray that you, your spirit, the Holy Spirit, fill me, uh, my heart, Lord, and the whole my tongue, and I preach exactly what you need to preach, Lord. I pray that uh, you would uh, speak to our heart in Jesus, I pray. Amen. Would you turn your Bible and Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, please? Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. This morning I'm going to speak on the title message is Following in Jesus. Following Jesus is not easy, but it's a joyful life. To know that I'm on the way to heaven and God is my heavenly father and I'm his child. The world does not know what is the purpose of this life. As we get saved, now we grow, we know that our purpose is life to glorify Him and to please Him. But now we are here, church, and I have, I have a Bible, the King James Bible. I have a nice super on YouTube. I'm sorry you cannot see my face. But here we have a nice building here. But as we to serve the Lord, but as you look at outside, who never received Jesus Christ, their personal Savior, when you see the people who have a tattoo on their body, and when you see the people get drunk in the nighttime and curse at people, but we think that we are better than those people. I'm here, I'm a missionary to China. Am I, think that, am I thinking that am I better than those people? But the Bible tells us exactly where we came from, who we were before we got saved. Ephesians chapter 2 and, and 3 and 4, the Bible says, Among who also we all had our conversation in time past, in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. The Bible clearly tells us we are we were the children of the devil. But it is stopped at verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy of his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace, i.e. saved. Quickened them means alive. And Jesus saved our soul. When you get saved, the God changed your life. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If you are saved, whether you want it or not, you are following Jesus Christ automatically. But I will ask you this. Are you following Christ closely or are you following him far away? Following Jesus is a choice. Our Savior gave us two requirements as we following Jesus. Point number one, that is, uh, let him deny himself. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, then deny yourself. 
The world philosophy is life is all about you, but I'm sorry, life is not all about you. Life is not all about your children. Life is all about God. It's all about Him. And you look at another religion, they have to do something to get their own salvation. But true salvation comes from God as a free gift. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift, free gift. And here is a doctor, a child, and just gave me this, uh, this cup of water here. Just I receive here what I do. I drink it. I'm so thirsty right now. Ah, it's so nice. I just took it and say, thank you, Pastor Chang. I just took it as a gift. I don't have to pay for the money. I don't have to do something to get the water. He just gave it to me. As I take it as a gift, a free gift. As I get saved, this is what I did. I repent of my sin and believe on Jesus Christ. I accept him as my personal savior. Because it's already done. Because Jesus said it is finished. We must deny ourselves every day as we follow in Christ. If we do not deny ourselves every moment, our flesh will kick in. Our focus will be different than when we are following Christ. Even here the Bible says Apostle and John and James, as they, they follow in Christ, they were fighting. Where are we going to see Jesus? Where are we going to see it? Your right side or left side when you get into the kingdom? Where are we going to see it? They are fighting about position. Where are we going to see it? I remember when I was in school in Korea, the teacher said, and he said, when I was in elementary school, and, and you know, you know, in school they said, what do you want to be? So you got to fill in, right? So they said, all the time I was in elementary school, what, what do you want to be? I want to be a pastor. All six years, in the middle school, the same thing. What do you want to be? I want to be a pastor. But when he got into high school, and he said, and, and he played soccer. I mean, soccer in Korea, he played soccer all the time, right? So probably he was second year of their high school, and he played soccer. What happened was, somebody was playing soccer by accident. Somebody kicked his leg, so his legs broke, injured. And I remember what he said. He said, and after he broke his leg, and he said, if there is a God, why, he, why God broke my leg? And I said, after that, I never believe on him. Of course, he was not even saved, I believe. But something happened, that bad thing happened, he denied the Christ. Because he's he following Christ, he want to believe in Christ, Jesus Christ, there was a wrong motivation. But when something happened, the bad thing happened, that's what it's going to be. Deny Christ. How about you? Are you... What is your motivation of following Christ? I and mean, we here in the, in the church. What is our motivation? What is my motivation? The God's blessing for your family, for your health, for your children. You pray that you could, your kids go to nice and good university in Korea. What success? Get a nice job. You're making a lot of money. You got a high position. That's what you got. And pray, God, please bless me. Bless my family. There's nothing wrong. You ask the Lord for the blessing for your life. But what is your motivation? Do you have a desire like James and John to have a worldly focus? There is a great mission in man of God, Apostle Paul, and he said, I die daily. In Galatians chapter 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not. I by Christ liveth in me. And now I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And he said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not. I but Christ liveth in me. He said, I die daily. He wants that Jesus Christ live through him. Do you die daily? Well, all the time, it's life is all about me. Of course, we don't say that, but the pride inside. That's what you're saying. Point number two, and take up his cross. Jesus said, take up your cross, not your neighbors, not your friends, 
not all of the people. Your cross. If you want to follow Christ, don't worry another people. Following Jesus personally, and he said, take up your cross. And I see here, and I see the other people there, and I look at those people. Man, you know, their faith is so great. How can they serve the Lord? It's so amazing. And look at myself, and I all the time am fed in sin and sin and sin. And look at myself, the wicked sin. And look at them, and they don't have any problem. They don't have any problem married. They don't have any problem with the children. They don't have any problem. Wow, look at them. It looks like a perfect. But do not look at another people. And Jesus said, if any come after me, and take up your cross. Let him take up his cross. Life is full of trials, full of headaches. Who will like that trials? Who will like that headaches? Do you know that without cross, there's no resurrection? Do you know there's, there's, without trials, there's no victory? Is there any trials in your heart? There are two kinds of trials you can experience. But number one, that is because of your sin. The Bible says, reap what you sow. Galatians chapter 6 and 7 and Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall also the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Sin makes us focus ourselves instead of focus on God. There's another thing that trial could experience. That God sent a trial for you and I that I experienced the heart of God, the grace of God. We cannot understand without trial how that Jesus Christ went through that cross. God sent trials, we could to see God's mercy and His grace. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 12 and 6, and, and the Bible says, For whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth and Go as every son whom he received. You know, just months ago, and I just, you know, I have a four kids, and, you know, my oldest son is 12, and second is John is 10. And then, and Jan, John, and Sammy, I mean, you know, two years apart, you know, you know, all the time they are fighting. Not all the time, you know, sometimes I would say. And what happened is, and they, and they don't, I say, just keep saying, don't do it, and they keep fighting, you know. I mean, what happened is, as I follow, I just get them and spank them. Of course, they cry. And I said, Sammy John, look at me. I never spank another kids, but you're my kids because I love you. I must correct you. Of course, after spanking, we, we hug each other and say, I'm sorry, and it's okay, I forgive you and love them because I Love my kids. Another kids, I don't care. It's their kids. It's not my kids. It's a parent's responsibility. For my kids, I got to spank my kids and love my kids. The same thing. If you are God's child, when you sin and God will chasten you, it's not God, God is judging. God does not judge. But God will chasten us when we sin. Why? Because he loved us. He wants to correct us. He wants to lead us to his perfect will, right path. Oh, we want to go our own path, our own way, our own will. That's why the trial comes. But you got to really figure it out. Why trial comes? Because of your sin? Well, because of God wants to let you experience his grace and mercy through the trials. Nehemiah 7, the Lord is good and stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Romans 8.20, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. 
Proverbs 3 and 3, 3 and 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean down to all understanding in all ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And next verse, the Bible says, be not wise with thy own eyes. And God said, fear the Lord and depart from evil. And I remember last year, last November, and um, my wife and I, and then the head of, you know, the corona. You know, corona is, uh, is a real the virus, but, uh, you know, for me, I didn't have any you know, symptom and just went through. But my wife, she had a, you know, I mean, had a pneumonia, and she had to go to the ER, the hospital. And I was in a home, and then I just got the, the phone call after three days later, my wife, and she called me at midnight, and she said, honey, pray. And she said, and I, I saw that um, the, the sign of the miscarriage. And actually, and in Sammy and John, there's two years under the part that's supposed to have another baby, and we lost the baby. We had a miscarriage. So I know when my wife and she said, I saw that, the, the miscarriage sign, and, and we know what's going to happen. Be honest with you, I was so scared, and I just, I just bowed my, my, my knee, and I asked God, God, I ask you for a son, and I could raise my kids for you, and the priest of God in the land of China, Lord, I know, and you, you know, I cannot do anything, Lord, and I, I, would you please spill my son there, Joshua? Would you please spill my son? And I just pray, God, would you please uh, give me that some scripture you could comfort me. And you know what, that God gave me that verse, the, the Philippians chapter 4 and verse and 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God shall pass at all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When I open the Bible and read that scripture, and I don't know that the peace that came, peace it comes in my heart. And I could sleep without no worry because I know and God is control. And God gave us a life and He could take it away. It's all about Him. That never experienced that without trials, I would never experience that the peace and joy you want to get through the trials. John chapter 14, 27, Peace I leave you in my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace, the only and Jesus, the peace I give unto you. Do you have a peace in your life? I'm not talking about that joy and, you know, that worldly, I would say, pleasure. And you got a new car, and man, this is a new car. I got a fancy car. And then next year, I got another new one comes. Man, I wish I had the one. And you got a maybe nice new iPhone, and now it's iPhone 13. Now, like, man, look at this iPhone 13. That's why I got to get it. But next year, this iPhone 14, whatever is going to come. And you're like, wow, I want to get another one. But God said, peace I give you, not as the world giveth, that give I unto you. That's what the Jesus said. Do you have that peace? Or all your time you worry about the jobs and money and worry about this coronavirus. One day all we're going to die. One day, do you know that? You're going to get try to live forever? I'll be in a home and I'm going to live forever. One day we're going to die. But only you could have that peace. Do you know how can you have a peace? When you obey him. I don't know if you have to watch the YouTube and sitting home and eating some snack and, you know, you know coffee or whatever else. And, and do you have peace? It's so long now and I come to church and worship together and forget about it and sit in the home and watch Probably not just, just turning the, you know, the internet and just do, do your own things. Do you have that peace? And now you want a blessing? Why my life is so miserable? I don't have a peace. That's why. Because you don't even want to. 
Because God knows your heart. God knows my heart. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Point number three, follow me. When Jesus showed a miracle and, and he fed 5,000 people, and so many people and they started following Christ, and Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did it of the loves and were filled. And John 6 and 66, 67, it says, From the time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And he all see the world, we know the parable, and hear thousands, thousands of people and following Christ. And Jesus said, you follow me not just because you believe in me, not because you believe in a miracle, because you are filled with the food. But when Jesus told him the truth, why are you following him? Because you don't follow me, because what you want to get from me, not just follow me with the pure motivation. And Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Will you also go away? Just like this, guys, when something in here praise the Lord and worship so with something, corona happens, something happens, boom! And just deny me? You want to do like that, stand on the guys? Deny your faith? Do you remember one day? Jesus, I will never deny you, Lord. I will die for you. Do you have the time when you get saved, when you realize you're on the way to hell, but Jesus Christ died and shed his blood and God saved your soul? Did you think about you? Do you care about Jesus? Don't be deceive yourself. God is not mocked. Be not deceived. Are you losing focus as you're following Christ? Do you remember what Jesus did for us? The Roman soldiers that brought the nine tails and the beat our Savior and tear it away. And his, all the body and his belly and the belly, that all the flesh is tear it up. And mock on our Savior. If you're so of God, save yourself. Spit on his face and put the beers up and mock or smash his head. That's what the world, that's what the devil, and that's what you did. That's what I did for my Savior. But the Bible says, as he carried the cross, as he went through that horrible, the terrible, the cross. And he did not open his mouth. Isaiah 53 and 6 and 7. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of our soul. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shadow is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. And we all then know that song. He could call 10,000 angels destroy the world. You know why he did not open his mouth? But that answer is Hebrews chapter 12 and 3 and 3. 2 and 3. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despite the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him that he endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your mind. The Bible says, verse 2, endure the cross, despite the sin, right before for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. And Jesus Christ, he knew that there was the will of God on the cross for you and I, for, 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 for me, the salvation. 
But the Bible says he carried a cross and you are the cross with joy. For you and I. Who for the joy was set before him endured the cross. Despite the shame. Yeah, probably you are just walking here and they pledge something, you're getting the wood chips in your finger and they're like, Oh! The wood chips in my finger and the beating off the nail on the finger. I'm like, ow! Oh, it's hurting! It's not about physical pain. And when he and Jesus got, you know, Jesus Christ and he down the cross and he said, My God and my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus Christ, he never said, my God, he all the time has to pray, my Father. But at the time, God the Father put all the sin upon him, that God the Son, and there was a separation. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, never separated God the Father. There was a first time that he separated God the Father. The spiritual separation that he experienced, and he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forced him? That's why you die. That's when you die without Jesus Christ, and you go to hell, and you will say, my God, my God, why hast thou forced him? That's why you should have said. That's why I should have said. And Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You know, follow him. I know this is a pandemic. Now it's shutting down again. And all about the devil's playing, all about government's control. But we know God allowed this, but God wants us to look upon him, beg him for his mercy and grace. That's what this pandemic happened. God wants to get the attention from this church, from all of us, not get discouraged. But Jesus said, follow me and take up your cross and deny yourself and follow him. Let us Follow Jesus Christ closely. Let us walk in with him. Walk in the spirit. And the Bible says, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and thank you for your goodness. I thank you for this beautiful the time, Lord, and we could just being alive, Lord. I could breathe, Lord. I could just walk in. I could talk. You would have killed me, Lord, and I sin every day. But because of your mercy, your grace, I'm staying here in this pulpit, Lord. I pray that you would be here and the, the pastor child and thank you for his uh, faithfulness and his uh, example, Lord. And I pray that you will fill him your spirit, Lord, as, I, as he lead this church, Lord, in China International Baptist Church. Be with the church members, Lord, that follow you, Lord, and closely. I thank you for your goodness. Jesus in my prayer. Amen.